Hello everyone, uh, we'll try and see if this works, try and make a, a video lesson today. So as you can see, the lesson is about these literacy equations that we keep going on about. I'm not sure if we did this one before Christmas, but I'm just going to go over it. And it gives you uh, something to do with this period, as well as the other work that we'll have ready for you. Okay, let's go. Piece of music. Insert the time signature at the correct place. That is the space where the time signature goes. What you do is you go uh, round about the middle of the tune. There's a reason why you don't go to the very beginning and you don't go to the end. It's something to do with an anacrusis. Right, this tune doesn't happen to have, a, have, have an anacrusis. But the best thing to do is roughly go, go to the middle. So as you can see here, these are all quaver notes. That's a half beat note. That's a half beat note. That makes one. So one, two, three. There are three beats in the bar. And just double check that. You can check down here. Look, one, two, three. Three one beat notes, three beats in the bar. So the answer there would be three, four. Easy. The tempo marking allegro means fast. Allegro in music means fast. The dynamic marking in bar one means mezzo forte. Spelt mezzo, M-E-Z-Z-O. It means medium loud. So the answer to that is medium loud. The dynamic marking at bar one means, oh I've just done that one, I'm sorry. Insert the correct dynamic change marking to show that the music gets louder from bar six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can either write C-R-E-S-C, -E crescendo, or you can actually write crescendo. That, that's the word crescendo. If you don't know how to spell that, I'll look it up, crescendo. It's crest for short. Or you can do that thing where you put what's called the little hairpins. So it's a little maths you would call it a less than sign with a volume level goes up like that and that's what would be correct for uh, that one volume please thank you uh, insert a note to complete bar three right we can't really do them without listening to the music so that's the one where you would have to write a note maybe here i would guess that the note would probably be a g because what we tend to do in questions like that tend to do is make it a repetition from somewhere else. So you probably find you would hear this here in the music. You'll hear that you'll hear that at the start, then you hear it again, and what's meant to happen is you're meant to remind yourself that you've heard it there. And it's the same as that there. So I would guess that's a G. Insert and continue the descending sequence at bar nine. Okay, so I showed you that before Christmas for a descending sequence. So what you do here is a descending sequence, a sequence, remember, is the same pattern of notes. It's not repetition. Repetition here would be B again, B again, and G again. But if it's a descending sequence going down the way, right, the starting note would be a C. So the next note would be two down, because that's two down. So you copy the same sequence of notes. So that would be a C. A, F. Because each time you're missing out, if you can see here that each time it misses out a note. So if your starting note is a descending sequence and your starting note is a C, you miss out the B and you write an A. You miss out the G and you write an F. So the answer would be in crotchets C, A, F. And that's your descending sequence. Name the note marked X, F sharp. Okay, I think I do remember doing this one with you because I think I remember someone said F sharp. I can't remember who it was. Right, I think it may have been may have been a uh, Neve, but Neve Gray, but I, I can't remember. But I think I remember doing this as a class. Uh, the note with the greatest value is the, and something be right. Okay, so the note with the greatest value is the, this one here. That is a dotted minimum. It's a three beat note. And as you can see, there are no other notes that are longer than three beats. So the note with the greatest value is the dotted minimum and gets three beats. And the note with the least value is the quaver. There's tons of them in this example, quaver. So the note with the least value is the quaver and gets half a beat. Right, that's kind of a badly worded. It should really say half a beat or half a beat or something, but not half beats, but never mind. Right, the trumpet plays the melody and is part of the brass family. That is really, really simple. 
the key signature of the music is, okay, one shot, ends in a G, G major. G major for one shot. Okay, add a sign to show the music is repeated. What you do there is you put a double bar line here. So you add in another bar line and you put a dot there and a dot there. You don't have to put the opposite here, bar line, bar line, dot, dot, because you only have to do that if you want to repeat from somewhere else in the music. If you want to repeat from the very start, you don't have to add in a repeat sign at the very start. It's automatically presumed that you go back to the start. If, however, you wanted to repeat from here, bar four, you have to put in bar line, bar line, two dots, and then you go back to play. In total, there will be so many bars in this music, so it's double. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twenty-two is the answer. Okay, that's that one done. Let's see if I can move this one down. Another one. Nope, okay, I don't remember doing this one, so let's just do this one. Okay, the key of the music is, now, you've got to be very careful, quite often, uh, you will have to learn about relative minors for key signatures, okay? But, so, this is in C major. No sharps, no flats, C major. But you need to be careful because it might be an A minor. Now, it's not. It's not because you can see here that it ends in a C and it's something that an A minor has. It's actually lots of G sharps. Now, we haven't really done much of that yet. We'll be doing more of it. Okay, it doesn't matter just now because it's not the answer, so don't worry too much about it. But, just what I'm trying to say is don't presume something is always in C major. It might be in A minor. If it ends in an A and it's got G sharps, this is not. It ends in a C, there's no G sharps, so the answer is C major. Circle the first example of a Scotch snap. Oh, somebody's done it. Circle the, or the first example. I beg your pardon. That's a Scotch snap. Now, some of you might not have done that. If you're crashing music, you just need to look up what a Scotch snap is and it'll explain it. It's actually a, a very common rhythm used in Scottish music. Durham, durham, and it's a semi-quaver followed by a dotted quaver. It's the opposite of that. Okay, it's the opposite of that. Those are bouncy notes, dotted notes, and that's a Scottish snap. So if you don't quite know what that is, if you look up, we'll go on the website, the revision websites, you will see that. My phone's just went. Is that Mr. Henderson? Let me just check. Oh, it's Miss Flynn. There you go, Miss Flynn started early. I'm recording this today. I'm, I'm in school, it's a quarter to nine. So Miss Flynn started early. Uh, Mark, with O, an example of an octave leap. Okay, that should be fairly straightforward. A leap of eight notes. There it's there. Eight notes. Okay. That's an octave leap. Uh, name the distance of the two box notes in bar four. One, two, three, four. Okay, that there is called a second because you go one, Two, one, two. Remember, I spoke about this before Christmas about intervals. So, for example, the interval here, the interval between this note and this note, you count up from the note, but you don't, you don't forget to include the first note when you're talking about intervals. I gave you the example of a house. Okay, if a house, if a house has got two floors to it, two, two, two stories to it, because my team's going, right? Uh, if a house has got two floors to it, you don't you don't go one, you don't go one, you go first floor, second floor, one, two. And it's the same in music. So this interval here, for example, is one, two, three, four. That's a fourth. Okay, this one here is a second. It's not a one, there's no such thing, right? Because you go one, two, one, two. Okay. Uh, name the distance of the two box notes mapped in bar five. Same 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 uh, same answer. One, two. Second, describe the tempo marking in bar seven. Right, ral is short for ralentando, which means you gradually slow down. Right, there's another one called ritardando, but it means the same thing, but the most common one is ralentando. Ralentando in Italian means you slow down, so you gradually get slower. That's the answer. Uh, the Italian tempo marking means played at a moderate speed. Okay, moderato, there's, there's, there's two that mean moderate, mo, moderato, andante and moderato. Adagio is slow, andante or moderato is moderate, that's my team's going again, and allegro is fast. Okay, 
Uh, name the bar made entirely of scotch snaps. Name the bar, sorry, made entirely of scotch snaps. Uh, bar 7. This type of Scottish dance is known as ah. Right, ah. That's, that's good. I'm glad it's done that because quite often you have to revise. I've said this so many times before how you now and again have to revise your old work, National 5 stuff. So if you did the National 5 exam, which I know, I know most of you didn't do because of a lockdown, you would know that a, 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 a Scottish dance that contains scotch snaps is called a strat spay. A strat spay contains uh, scotch snaps. So if you go in and study scotch snaps, as I've suggested, one of the things it might say is featured heavily in a strat spay. So I know, that's, I know that's a lot to take in, but I have said time and time again, one of the things you can possibly do during this lockdown is just go back over National 3, National 4, National 5 concepts and just revise them. I'm sorry, there's nothing else I can, I can suggest because some of you remember a crashing higher music and you've obviously missed two years of work, right? And some of you missed a lot of work last year due, due to lockdown, otherwise you would have studied all this for your exam, etc. You'd have studied it all for your exam, but you've got time now to go back on the website. It's very straightforward, none of it is complex. I've said this before to you, but it's just basically general knowledge, it's not complex. It's the type of thing that anyone could sit down, anyone who's not even doing music could sit down and learn about. It's basically general knowledge. So that's something that, that just goes to show you how you might bring up, bring in some of that into the higher exam. Uh, the symbol used in bar eight indicates a ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ah. Right, we've not really done that before. That's called a pause sign. Pause. That indicates a pause in the music where you hold on that C for as long as reasonably possible. You hold it on, you pause. So it's a pause sign. Okay. The note with the least value in the music is called a O. That's it there. Two lines. That's a semi-quaver. Semi-quaver. And is worth a quarter of a beat. Okay, right, so there's a couple to go on with. Miss Flynn has prepared your work for today as well. Uh, and if you don't manage to get it today, you can do it Friday. I'm going to come off now and see who's been trying to get me on Teams. Uh, and I'll see if this video works.